My name is Knut. I'm uh, from Oslo, Norway. My name is uh, Runar. I'm from Oslo, Norway too. So we have two people from Oslo and Norway who uh, have something to do with a little supporters club for Stoke City over there. He's the chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, uh, it's an honor to be a chairman for this uh, fantastic supporter uh, group of Norway. We have past 600 members, uh, which I think is quite much <laughs> uh, for a small country. And, uh, and uh, we, I'm very proud of being a chairman for a dedicated support, stock supporters in Norway. And there's quite a big piece in the program about you tomorrow, so you better buy it a program. It is, really? Too. Okay, good. Um, Actually, we are 600, 613 members. I'm the membership responsible. So, so 613, I'm hoping you'll get another one soon because 13 is an unlucky number. Oh yes, we will be 650 this year, I guess. Hmm, hope so, so. We all know about the history of the supporters club, but why are you here this weekend? What's special about this weekend? Because there's about 70 of you here this weekend? Well, we're celebrating the 150 years uh, anniversary for and Stoke. And how are you doing that? Uh, well, uh, the, the idea was uh, we have two trips a year, we call it the joint trip when we arrange for the members to travel together because that's very fun. Uh, a lot of supporters travel over by themselves week by week, uh, but this uh, we want to make a special occasion uh, and celebrate the club's 150th year's anniversary. And we're having uh, a an, an, uh, great uh, party at the Lila's Bar after the match tomorrow, uh, where we have some speeches and some gifts to the club and a DJ and food. And uh, we wanted to do something special in this year uh, with one of the joint trips. So what does Stoke City mean to yourself? Well, it's, uh, it's a way of life, actually. Yes, it's been you know, for 40 years, actually, from the early 70s. Yes, full of them every year. Much. Uh, Your hair's not going grey like mine. <laughs> it's slightly grey here, but uh, OK. I stay red, red yet. yet. <laughs> still. But you still enjoy it as much now as when you first started? Yes, uh, I, would, I would say so, yes. Mm. I, I had some periods in life where I not had that much focus because of family and things, but uh, I'm like uh, a youngster again now. Well, that's good. Mm. Bruno. Yeah, it's the same for me. I, uh, it drew my attention uh, early in the 70s and I've followed Stokes since then, uh, even through the shadow years, uh, when it was very hard to get out any results. Remember this was before the internet and social media everything. Uh, and we had this one page on the Norwegian text TV, it was 800 something, <laughs> and there they put anything that nobody cared about. So you could uh, switch that on and then you had to be like a, a pariah, you know to be there on spot to see, get a, a little uh, little impression of the table if there was second third level anything and if you missed it you have to wait for 25 minutes <laughs> at least to get back that was the uh, that and bbc stoke was the only thing but nowadays it's totally different because you can follow the club closer through the through the through the net and through the media and i think that have helped and increased the, the, the interest in Norway. It's easier to follow a, a team abroad now and before, but I've always been there. It's quite interesting because obviously the most famous Norwegian supporters are AHA, who, who yeah. obviously mm. support Stoker, right. yeah. and they yeah. started to support because they saw them on TV many years ago yeah. when they used to get Midlands television, ATV mm. yeah. over there. Mm. And I suspect a, a lot of Norwegian supporters started to support yes. English clubs and British clubs because of that. The they? average age of uh, over support club is it's 50 years, plus minus 50 years old. So we're from the 60s. Born and bred in the 70s with uh, soccer from uh, from the Midlands, yeah. So how are you going to get some people, some younger people into your support? They are coming actually because I think many of them are uh, attracted uh, to English football and I think Stoke is the real deal, uh, uh, more like the original English football club. What do you mean by the real deal? Yeah, that's uh, tough guys, it's down to earth, uh, you have to re rely on local resources, uh, you play how you want, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you you you're taking it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we play how we want. We are Stoke City. We play how we want. Right. But but a lot of youngsters are attracted to because they think that Stoke is uh, one of the last clubs standing from the original idea that you fight for your community, for your area, and the proudness of the club. I think uh, attracts a lot of youngsters because we have some uh, people mm. going on uh, on that matters mm. actually. So. But, but when you go to the Britannia Stadium tomorrow, I hope the atmosphere is as good as it's been used to be because yes. it started not to be as good this season. Mm. Why do you think that could be? 
Well, uh, I, I think it's about expectations. Uh, people were thrilled uh, on the flight up to the Premier League the first season. Uh, you, you, I think they felt very proud just being there. And then the, the question is coming, uh, what is the next? Uh, and then you get a little disappointment. And I think uh, as a professional club you have to deal with that. You cannot change people's mind in hope and dreams for a better future in a way. Uh, so the only thing the club has to do is to uh, be realistic, but, but try to give supporters uh, some new things to believe in. Uh, and I think that the, the, the atmosphere in Birmingham was fantastic. Uh, so I, I think it's there, uh, but I think it's, uh, we, we need some uh, good matches, some good results and some proudness back, and I, I'm sure it will come. So what are your expectations then for this season? For this season, I hope we can uh, have a position around um, 12 plus minus. Maybe, maybe I, I can accept uh, 13 and 14 place, but um, so I hope to climb a bit uh, of the, um, uh, this situation today. Hope we can get uh, more goals, of course, uh, being uh, more professional on uh, on uh, situation like corners and free kicks. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I uh, put an article out on a website recently. I said 42 points. Mm. I think this is a season where 30, 42 points is the goal and we have to take it from there. Mm. Because a lot of new things is happening and you cannot just have some new hot water on a football team and get a new product. You, you, you have to work, work it up. 42 points. And then cup win? Yeah, <laughs> if we can beat uh, Man United, yeah. when? when, of course, Angela, then we are in the semi-finals and everything can happen. I, yeah. I think we beat Manchester United. I think mm. we're going at least to the semi-finals in the League Cup. And if we manage to maintain our top level, I think we can. this could be a surprising uh, cup uh, adventure this year, mm. but maybe not so good in the league. Well, listen, we hope you have a wonderful 150 years celebration yourself. We look forward to seeing you again, and thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.